1960s most famous Motown singers who have sadly died. Motown records remain one of the major records that shaped the music industry and production of songs since 1960s under Barry Gordy Jr. The record went on to sign many artists who became famous either as solo act or under a band. In this video we will focus on Motown legends who have sadly died but can never be forgotten. Remember to like, comment and subscribe for such amazing content. Michael Jackson Michael Jackson is considered the biggest artist to ever come out of Motown Records. The King of Pop began his career as a part of the Jackson 5, but soon emerged as a solo artist. He released four solo albums between 1972 and 1975 with Motown. It wasn't until 1979 with the release of the album, Off the Wall, that Jackson became an established solo artist. Jackson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1997. On June 25, 2009, Michael Jackson died of cardiac arrest in Los Angeles, California, at age 50. Rick James Despite rising to fame at the peak of the disco era and getting plenty of club play, Rick was never disco, funk and soul were his forte. It's not well remembered today, but Rick was Motown's only major star of the 80s who hadn't made their name in the label's classic 60s and early 70s era. He was massive, and it was all down to the funk. As the hot new star in the Motown firmament, Rick was earmarked to produce Diana Ross in the late 70s. But when James discovered he was only working on half an album, he said, Funk that, I'm outta here. But one of the songs he had written for Ross became a foundation stone of another career, the superfunkin', I'm a sucker for your love, released in 79, was Tina Marie's first hit. When James died of heart failure, on August 6, 2004, he was found with nine different drugs in his system. Not his best idea, he was a diabetic, had a pacemaker, and had previously survived a minor stroke and a heart attack. Florence Ballard In the months before she died, Florence Ballard, the spunky teenager who founded the most successful female vocal group in history, The Supremes, told her own side of the story. Recorded on tape, Flo shed light on all areas of her life, including the surprising identity of the man took advantage of her prior to her entering the music business. The details of her love-hate relationship with Motown Records because of Barry Gordy, her drinking problem and pleas for help. She had a never-ending desire to be the Supreme's lead singer, and her attempts to get her life back on track after being brutally expelled from the group. This is a tumultuous and heartbreaking story of a world-famous performer whose life ended at the age of 32 as a lonely mother of three who had only recently recovered from years of poverty and despair. Gladys Horton she was a co-founder of the Marvelettes who helped put fledgling Motown records on the musical map with its first number one hit, Please Mr. Postman, died at age 66. Wanda Young replaced Horton as lead singer for such softer, more sophisticated fare. The Marvelettes struggled with personal conflicts among the members, and as the Supremes and Vandellas ascended, Motown gave them less attention. When Horton gave birth to her son Sammy, who has cerebral palsy, she left the business to care for him. Levi Stubbs Levi's baritone was the linchpin for the four top seamless harmonies as the lead singer. They performed together for over 40 years. The bulk of their hits came during Motown's heyday. For decades, 36 albums and countless hits later, the original group finally changed when Lawrence Payton died in 1997. Levi Stubbs stopped performing in 2000 after a series of strokes. He died at home in Detroit the morning of October 17, 2008, with his wife, Clinus, at his side. They'd been married since 1960. Ronald, Ronnie, White. Ronnie was rhythm and blues singer. He was one of the founding members of the Motown group, The Miracles. He was an accomplished writer, co-writing many Miracles songs, as well as songs for colleagues at the Motown label. He co-wrote the hits My Girl, My Guy, Don't Look Back, You Beat Me to the Punch, and others. He began singing in numerous music groups with members of The Miracles. He was a member of the Pre-Miracles groups, The Chimes, and The Matadors. He also recorded as half of the duo, Ron and Bill. He discovered Stevie Wonder and is responsible for bringing him to Motown to audition for the label. He remained a member of The Miracles until the group disbanded. In 2001, as a member of The Miracles, he was inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame and in 2012, into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank you for watching, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. See you on the next video.